everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? You ready for the fight? <laughs> Praise God. The fight is on. <laughs> no bow to doubt it. The fight is on. Praise be to my Father. Let's go somewhere. <laughs> Psalm 119. Glory. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, verse 1. Blessed. What's the opposite of best? Blessed. Cursed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. In other words, undefiled meaning your garments are undefiled. You're clean. You haven't touched the things that God says don't touch. Amen. You haven't touched unclean things. So you've maintained an area to where you have a pure heart and clean hands. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord or in the word of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Again, he's talking about the undefiled. Blessed are them. He realizes if I seek him, if I press through and seek him in everything that I do, I will maintain a pure, holy, righteous life. But without him and without that presence, I can't do it. Does everybody see this? See, there's an area right now where something I've noticed tremendously you know, people don't see certain things. And, and when you begin to understand and see what the enemy has been doing in such a process of time and in the area of wiping out people, one of the things he doesn't want an individual to do is fulfill his call, his purpose, or their destiny. So he moves, and that's why he's called sly. Amen? He's sly. He's wicked. He's evil. But the powers of darkness know how to manipulate humanity. They know how to manipulate him through emotion. They know how to manipulate him through desires. They know how to manipulate them through thoughts. They know how to manipulate them through chaos. They even know how to manipulate them through things that we call blessings. Amen. Prosperity. All of these things the enemy is manipulating. Think about how many people have gone from walking upright and backslidden into addiction again or into porn pornography or have divorces and all kinds of other things. Unequally yoked to marriages now. Many things that have occurred because one is willing to seek all the way through and the other one's not because of the influence of the enemy. There's something about an area to where the enemy is convinced individuals that salvation is sufficient. I saw, I don't know if I shared this already, but I was watching Sid Roth. I love to watch Sid Roth. He brings all these people with powerful testimonies. And two individuals that were taken to heaven and they were also taken to hell. Both of, them's both of their testimony was the same in the area what they saw in hell. They saw more Christians and more pastors in hell. They couldn't believe how many Christians that so-called Christians and how many pastors were in hell. And there were three things why there was many so-called believers in hell. The first one is the lie of once saved, always saved. 
Many people believed in him. Those that are preaching it are going to hell. The second one was unforgiveness. And the third one was gossip. Gossip, people's mouths. The Lord was showing them how people were being destroyed by individuals' mouths, by backbiting people and so forth. Those three were putting people in hell. Both of those individuals that went to hell said the same thing. It, it blew me away. And I realized because there's an area where people just believe that salvation is sufficient. I'm saved. I'm good. No, you're not. You're dangerous. We've got to go to beyond salvation. Amen? Beyond salvation. You know, I run into people and they go, oh, how many people did you save today? I didn't save nobody. These goofy people that are bound by religion. They're think, they're, they think that numbers of salvation is what rewards them. Jesus said, go out and disciple them. There's not enough people being discipled. The only thing they're getting is salvation, hanging out in the outer court and thinking everything's okay. They are one foot in outer darkness and one foot in outer court. Never going beyond salvation. And this is where you and I have got to not only absorb this, but express it. We've got to let people know that there's more to salvation. It's the beginning. Salvation is an invitation into the kingdom. It's what you do after which is important. Once you're in, now what are you going to do? Amen? In Matthew 22, people are dying and going to hell thinking that their salvation is sufficient. Now we all know that God has the last say, amen? And he knows, you know, the heart of an individual, even though we don't. Remember, there's the heart of flesh and there's the heart of the spirit. God is merciful. In Matthew 22 and verse 1, let's speak it. Then Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. He sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Just think about how many times you rejected the invitation to salvation ourselves. Many times. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it. They made what? Light of it. And they went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest sees his servants treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. That word worthy is essential. Therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with the guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on the wedding garment. It was a garment of salvation. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without the wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, or what we call invited, but few are chosen, or what he calls faithful. The wedding garments is the garments of salvation, the invitation to salvation. There are those accepting, those rejecting, and those exchanging their salvation garments for a defilement one. Corruptive. This is what we call the first dressing room. 
of the chamber of the tabernacle of God. Is everybody with me? It is the first dressing room. Each room has a certain garment representing position. So many people are not willing to go beyond salvation. They are content with salvation. They're not wanting, willing to learn more. They're not willing to press into God's presence. I see people come and go all the time. I see people who do not press in and I know what's going to happen to them. In Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. That's why the word tells us, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Those are garments. That is the armor of God. But you can't put in the armor of God without other garments. Amen. So people that are thinking salvation is sufficient are deceived. You must go beyond salvation. And we must continue to think that way also. And press through there. When you begin to fall back in the area where you think you, just because you're saved is okay, you're in danger. Amen? Remember, there's a st uh, state of being saved or born again. And those are two different garments and two different chambers. And Philippians chapter 2, is everybody okay? Reality. You know, again, as we press through, we begin to find that so many things that we used to see, believe, were incorrect. The closer you get to God, the closer you're going to see things that you thought you were right were actually a false reality. In verse uh, something, 1, Philippians 2, 1, there, therefore... If there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in loneliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you... Look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly ex exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, do something. Work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for he, for his good pleasure. Work out yourself. In other words, work out. Go beyond salvation. You must go beyond salvation because relying on salvation itself is dangerous. That was the invitation into the kingdom. Now you must go beyond. But see, the enemy is pre deceiving individuals, preventing them from going beyond salvation, and they are waking up in hell. Why? Because they're compromising. They're still touching unclean things. Their garments are defiled. And you can't get into the kingdom or get to that wedding without wedding garments. Amen? And that's the true garments of salvation. Is everybody okay? Moving beyond salvation into the next dressing room chamber, into the spirit of holiness, exchanging your garments for the priestly garments, the garment of praise. It is sanctification by the anointing of God Almighty, which is moving beyond salvation into the next chamber. 
called the holy place. It's, there's a reason why it's called the holy place. First of all, we've got, we have went through the blood where Jesus shed in the first chamber with the salvation garments. Now we're going into a place where there's the holy presence of God through the Holy Spirit where you are now getting holy garments. And the purpose of these holy garments are called priestly garments so that you may minister to the Lord from there. So many people are not willing to minister to God. They like to come to church. Never press in. Never go beyond the veil of the outer, cha outer, uh, outer chamber, outer court. Notice the salvation. The dressing room of salvation. Never getting dressed with the priestly garments. They usually quit, run, or whatever because the influence of the demonic forces. Never making it through deliverance sometimes. Or even if they've been delivered, they fall back. Why? Because we and I are to maintain the thirst and hunger for his righteousness. There's an area where you and I must not be lukewarm or cold. We must be hot. We must be filled, dressed, and possessed with the presence of God. So we don't compromise, complacent, become lazy or sluggish. Amen? Not putting things as a false fulfillment. See, false fulfillments are from the reality of false reality. Why? Because people are seeking a false fulfillment with a false reality. The reality of truth has been put aside. Now they're seeking things. Why? And they're, they're coming out of the holy place into the outer court and don't even know it. Next thing they know, they're struggling big time. I can't tell you how bad I'm struggling. Yeah, you know why? You ain't touched the glory of God yet. You're not pressing through. Why? You've exchanged the garments or your garments have been defiled. They become unclean. Not realizing the things that you're touching because the discernment is not there. It's no, dull now. It's getting dull. See, the enemy loves to put us in that place of compromise and false fulfillment. Looking at the world, let me tell you, every time you see something going on in the world, the enemy will come to you and say, how come you're not like that? How come you're not blessed like that? How come you're not? Does he always loves to compare you with someone else. You don't need to compare nothing with anyone. You want to compare yourself with someone? Compare it with Jesus. That's what you compare yourself with. Hallelujah. Exodus 40. Remember, deception is Satan's greatest weapon. <laughs> and his power is fear. It's amazing how many people are still walking around with masks on when everything's been lifted. It's time to go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Exodus 40 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Beyond salvation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of what? Meeting. It's the meeting with God. That's the purpose of it. When we gather together, we want to meet with God. Amen? We want to seek and impress through to meet with God. Everything, every morning, that's what your first desire is. The Word says, seek Him early in the morning. In other words, I want to meet with you at first thing in the morning. If I can meet with you first thing in the morning, the rest of my day will work good. No matter what's going on, I know I'm gonna, all things are going to work to the good. But if you haven't met with him in the morning and made contact in the morning, you will react instead of respond. You'll become fearful. You will lose your peace. And you'll easily touch something unclean with a thought of agreement. Think about when people react, they just touch something unclean. Or else we responded. Amen. Flesh is unclean. The spirit is clean. So we want to meet with God every day. Verse 3. You shall put in the ark of the testimony and the partition of the ark with the veil. That will be the most holy place. That's where the glory of God is. 
You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it. And you shall bring the lampstand and the light in its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put up a what? Screen for the door of the tabernacle. That is the holy place. So we just call, show the most holy place, now the holy place. So he's working from heaven to the process of the earth. He's working from the most holy place to the outer court. Is everybody okay? Glory. Verse 7. And you shall set a laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court. This is called the outer court. All around and hang up the screen at the court gate. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hollow it and all its utensils and it shall be holy. You shall also, um, you shall anoint the what? Altar of the burnt offering and all its ut utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy. Hmm. This is awesome. You shall all anoint the labor and its base and consecrate it. And then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put holy garments on them. Those are the priestly garments. And anoint them and consecrate them that he may minister to me as a priest. That he may minister to me as a priest. See, people don't know how to minister to the Lord. Thank God we minister to the Lord here. I can't say everyone does, but majority of everyone does. Why? Because you're pressing through from the, and exchanging the salvation garments for the priestly garments. You cannot progress as a warrior without priestly garments. Amen? Is everybody okay? And he says, And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priests, for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Ministers to the Lord by praise and worship, crossing over from the outer court or outer veil of salvation into the holy place, putting on your priestly garments. These are put on daily. They're put on every day. Does everybody understand? I call it under armor. Your priestly garments are under armor. Amen? Because then you finally get to put the full armor of God as a warrior. In 1 Peter chapter 2, beyond Again, when I, when I saw those two testimonies, those, those two individuals that went to hell uh, and the Lord brought them from hell and then I brought them to heaven. The heaven was awesome. And they, sh and they said about all those people that were so-called believers and pastors and whatever, thinking that their salvation was keeping them out of hell when they were still touching unclean things and they were waking up in hell. It blew me away. Why? Because I knew it. I've known it from the beginning that I got saved from the moment, the visitation of the Lord. I knew that there was deception. I couldn't understand why we needed to minister to the body of Christ. And the reason for that is because of doctrines of demons that are people, holding people from going beyond salvation in the body of Christ. Not realizing it. Doing their own rituals, things of satisfying God. Not obeying the things that God is requiring. In 1 Peter chapter 2, oh, hallelujah. Remember, the Lord's returning for a blemish-free bride. And verse uh, 1. 
First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Let's be good together. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted the, the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are building up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual songs. Does everybody get it? Those are spiritual, your spiritual sacrifices are songs. To offer up spiritual songs acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Does everybody get that? Those are spiritual songs. That's your sacrifice. It's called the sacrifice of praise that you're offering up to God. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. He who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, a stone, a rock of what? Offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word. Of course, they don't even read the word. To which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who were, not, who were once not a people of God, but now a people of God, who had, had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, prevent yourself from defiling any of your garments. A royal priesthood to offer up spiritual songs and sacrifices into the holy place. Remember, your praise, your worship is filling the presence of God in the holy place. Amen? Maintaining the, the, the gatherings. So here is, this is where you and I maintain the gatherings of worship. Wearing priestly garments, exchanging our presence for his presence. Our life for his glory. Becoming more empowered and keeping our garments clean from corruption. And moving from milk to spiritual meat, food, always. Because now we're eating. We're feeding on his faithfulness. We're getting stronger. The words are now meat to you. They're not just milk. You are changing into his image more you eat of him. Amen. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. This is what you can say when you are living in the holy place. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 4. That's why the enemy has been keeping people from assembling. Some of them have gone from priests, have exchanged their priestly garments for salvation garments. Some people will die never even reaching a warrior's garment. Or a kingly garment. Never made it. 
Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being what? Being what? Being what? Being what? Assembled. Together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, no. This is not about restoring Israel. It's about bringing the kingdom of God in you and empowering you. But you shall receive power. Woohoo! Number eight. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Why? So you can access the second chamber. So the Holy Spirit can bring a spirit of holiness and a life of holiness. You know, many people have said to me, and I've asked them, so you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I got baptized when I was a kid. They threw water around me. No, man, that's not what I'm talking about. You speak in tongues? No, but I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. If God wanted me to speak in tongues, he would give it to me. What an idiot. The Bible says desire the gifts. That means you seek for it. Does everybody get it? Anything you want from him, you must seek for. That's the price. Well, if God wanted me to have it, he would just give it to me. No, you better go seek for it. He doesn't give you anything you don't desire. In fact, he tries to put the desire in you. But he wants you to press through to go after it, to receive it. And you don't stop until you're baptized with tongues. Does everybody understand that? And that's what's going on in the world. Because people are just saying, well, if God wanted me to, because pe preachers are preaching this. Well, if God wanted you to have it, he would just give it to you. No, he won't. You go seek it. You sought salvation. Amen. In fact, there's something you had to cooperate. It's called with grace. You had to repent, turn from your sins, and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior before you can even get into the kingdom. That was qualifications. Amen? The next chamber, the next dressing room, chamber, the garments, priestly garments, you go after it. You must exchange it. Salvation garments for priestly garments. Why? We want to continue to move beyond salvation. Hallelujah. Hebrew 6. M moving beyond oh, salvation. <laughs> beyond salvation. We want to move beyond salvation. Glory. Verse 1. Everybody there to speak it? Therefore, leaving the what? Discussion of the elementary principles of what? Christ. Let us go on to perfection. In other words, let's move on beyond salvation. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance, which is salvation, from dead works and of faith toward God of doctrines of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. But if, the, if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near being cursed whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. That what? Accompany salvation. In other words, go beyond salvation. Though we speak in this manner, 
For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward him in his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until what? The end, that you do not become what? Sluggish, lazy, compromising, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In other words, patience. Patience, endurance, they're the ones that are going to inherit it. Why? Because so many people are caught up and not willing to move on or go beyond salvation. Why? Remember, salvation, the outer court is the closest thing to outer darkness. They have one foot in and one foot out. Not going beyond salvation into the holy place, being baptized and filled with the Spirit of God. Not touching the things that are unclean. Staying thirsty and hunger for the presence of God. Staying on fire for God. Walking away from the world. Knowing what is holy, unholy, clean, unclean. What pleases God and displeases God. We have now become sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the process of regeneration and new birth continuing over and over and over. Till we become just like Him. Move beyond salvation. Move beyond milk. <laughs> Get out of the outer court of the salvation into the holy place and then move, prepare, pursue, go beyond the holy place into the most holy place of the throne of grace, not becoming lazy, sluggish, or compromising as the unwise virgins were. Amen? Ma Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Beyond salvation. You know, the enemy is, they, they have planned this whole thing to cause death to the whole earth. There are so many people that have gone back through drugs and alcohol that are overdosing and all, all over the world. Committing murders, all kinds of things. You know, they, they, they've removed God's man of truth. Amen. To, that was exposing all of these things. Of course, they're letting the rabbit hole move deeper and deeper, so they're going to get them all. And they got it all. Things are going to come down shortly. But in the meantime, the enemy has moved with false plagues. Amen? Lies, fears, keeping people from assembling, masking them, causing unkind, changing rules, just like the word of says in Daniel that they would change rules and all uh, laws and everything else to benefit themselves. Read, look at, they're ignoring the Constitution and your Bill of Rights. They can't arrest you. It is against the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They cannot force you to take a vaccination. It's illegal. Yet many of these places are now saying you can't work for us. Boys, there are a lot of lawsuits all over. A lot of these corporations that are servants of Satan kingdom are going to be bankrupt soon. The CDC is one of them. Demonic morons. They've lied. No, now they're confessing. Now they're repenting. They're not repenting. Hell, far be it. But they're confessing. Think about this. That only 6% have died from this virus compared to what they had. Now they're confessing it. And they've really just died because of complications. There are so many lawsuits against the governments and everything right now. All of these attorneys are gathering together all over the, all over the country. But what they've done is they've prevented people from moving from beyond salvation and some of them from not even getting there. Or some of them from moving out of the holy place into the court of salvation into outer darkness. Keeping them from working. Keeping, keeping them from gathering together. And then paying them from staying away from God. Think about that. So they're home. Heck, they can have drugs and alcohol delivered right to their house. They don't even have to move. And when the plague comes, what do they keep open? The liquor stores. The smoke shops. I mean, 
Just have it delivered. We'll pay you for it. In fact, when you run out of that money, we'll send you a few more checks. So it can kill you. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's doing a very good job of it. Matthew 9, 14. Then the disciples of John came to Jesus saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Oh. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Remember, fast is about sanctification, separation. Denying yourself of certain things that cause you to stumble. No one puts a piece of un shrunk cloth on a what? Old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor did I put new wine into old wineskins or old garments or else the wineskins break and the wine is spilled. And the wineskins are ruined but they put new wine into a new wineskin and both are what? Preserved. In other words, you can't patch a chamber garment, or put new wine in a corrupted garment. Amen? It will not hold. It won't hold. James 5. James 5. In verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Wow. They've not exchanged them, have they? Your gold and silver are corroded, and your, their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last day. Days. <laughs> wow. Indeed, the wages of, of the labor who mowed your fields, which you keep kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts is in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, the, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the earlier, early and latter rain. And we are getting closer. Ephesians 5. Nobody gets away with it. Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And given himself for what? For us as an offering and sacrifice <clears throat> to God as a what? Sweet smelling aroma. See, so when you're praising and worshiping the Lord, that's a sacrifice of praise. You become a sweet smelling aroma to him. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness or foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And they have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. 
For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are what? Evil. Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1. In verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, a firstborn from the dead, and a ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood, he has made us what? Kings. A king is a warrior. And priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. But you cannot fulfill kingship without becoming a priest. Does everybody understand that? Because kingship is is the third chamber. It is the garment of a king. It is the garment of a warrior. We are to be kings of our territories. Amen? He said uh, he's raised up kings and priests to God to serve him. Same thing with the, like the principalities. Those are considered kings and princes in the heavenlies. That are powers of darkness. Well, you are a king, but you are seated in heavenly places to battle every single one of them, if you will. You have dominion over them. That's why you do authority to call destructive fire down on every principality, power, darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places. Because you are now in the most holy place, wearing garments as a king, dressed with the full armor of God. And because you sit there in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, he is the king and you are his offspring of kings. You have authority and dominion over the spiritual realms. If people knew who they were in this arena as a king, if they would press in beyond salvation and even press in as a priest into the most holy place and get dressed with the full armor, and get dressed as a king, and walk out of that place into the spiritual realm and become a warrior, third dimensional warrior. There'd be more victory going on. Amen? You know, we are in the days where decisions are life and death. They're life and death decisions these days. Second Timothy chapter two. Whoops. Excuse me. <laughs> well, anyways, what did I say? Ten. There's not even a ten, is there? Oh. Maybe we're adding on to it. It's called Beyond Salvation Chapter. <laughs> Second Timothy Chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace and the plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men, these are individuals full of faith, who are consistent, who will be able to teach others also. In other words, they're an example. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier or a warrior of Christ Jesus. No one engaged in warfare, in spiritual warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of his life. Why? His garments will be contaminated. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier or warrior. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules. Yes. Unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. May the Lord give you understanding. 
Revelation 3. Moving beyond salvation will take denying of yourself, the picking of the cross, fighting the sword, and follow, which is the three chambers also. But that's the process. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 4, eh, let's go women. Eh, heck. Uh, verse 2, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Everybody there? Remember, therefore, how you, you have received and heard. Hold fast and do what? Repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I'm going to come and take your life. For you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In verse 17. Nah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Verse 16. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, says the Lord. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire, that you may be rich in white garments, and that you may be clothed. And that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear with the Spirit says, who Revelation 16. Hallelujah. And verse 15. Behold, says the Lord, I am coming as a thief. Blessed he who watches and keeps his garments clean, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Then a the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. And a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as mighty and great earthquake. Which has, ne has not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into the three parts and the cities of the nations fell. The great Babylon, which is the world system, was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about a weight of a talent. Men blaspheming God because of the plague of the hell, since the plague was exceedingly great. Instead of repenting, they cried out in blasphemy. God hardened their hearts. Does everybody see that? Man, what a time we are in right now. Would you turn to Revelation 22? And we'll close here. See, the enemy knows your garments. Verse 12. And the Lord said, Behold, I am coming quickly. 
and my, my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexual immoral, and murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all and prepare us all. Amen. Remember, we are in a movement beyond salvation from one court with garments to the next court of garments until we are dressed as warriors every single day. Amen? Too many people are taken out. Too many people are dying or, or being lost. Living their own lives according to how they feel and not denying their life. So, Lord, we just come to you this, morning, this evening and we just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for preparing us. And thank you. Let the words that were released from you tonight be imparted in us and protected to grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.